This is Doug Stout. We're with Franklin Norton. It's December 12th, 2013 in Newark, Ohio. Franklin, where were you born? I was born in uh, Gainesburg, Gainesburg, Tennessee. In, in what year then? 1921. Okay. And did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I had... Uh, uh, see, three brothers and three sisters. Okay. What and what were you doing before World War Two? Were you in school or were you working? Uh, no, I had just uh, uh, graduated from high school and uh, expected to be drafted into the service. So I asked my dad to take me to Nashville so I could take the cadet examination. And he did, and I passed it and set a date to go in service. Before that date came, I got my draft notice. And they had to cancel it because I already had a date set to go in. So I went into service and went through the procedure of uh, uh, your basic training. Basic training for, and then uh, primary and, and uh, secondary and uh, cadet training for for pilot training. And uh, advanced. Let's see. I think I took the uh, primary. I can hardly remember those different places that I went to. Well, that, that's written down on your form, so yeah, we can okay. we can look at that and get that. All right. So, so uh, when when, when I, you sign up, did you did you plan on being a pilot, or is that something that you took tests and, and they decided that you were, had an aptitude for that? No, I I, I uh, went and took the cadet examination to try to go through the procedure of, of getting a pilot, being a pilot. That's what I wanted to do. That's what you wanted to do. Uh huh. And I went through all the stages. Of, primary and, uh, and uh, basic and advanced flying training and got through all of them and got my pilot license and was commissioned as a second lieutenant at the time. And about 60% of the class that I went into got washed out, Right, didn't make it through and that, that was normal you know but I was lucky enough I went through it and uh, well, at the time I got through and got my pilot license why I got orders to go to Salt Lake City I think uh, Utah because they had already trained a bunch of pilots to be B-24 on the B-24 bombers and they needed to, to set the crews up. And uh, so I got orders to go out there and uh, my crew was formed and uh, I was a co-pilot and Hogan Togler was the pilot on the crew and then we, and then we had all the uh, others uh, 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 radio operator and uh, uh, let's see like tail gunner nose gunner ball turret gunner top turret gunner and uh, there's about 10 on the crew it was uh, what? Engin engineer okay. and navigator what made you want to be a pilot well I just Wanted to be in the Air Force and fly, okay. rather than be in the Army. Right, <laughs> in March. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, so they formed the crews out there, the 491st Bomb Group. And uh, we uh, flew a couple of practice flights around, and then they uh, we got orders to go overseas. And uh, we went to Harrington, Kansas, and picked up brand new B-24 bombers. That's four engine bomber. That's mm -hmm. the, the largest they had at that time. And uh, uh, we started flying then each crew of the 491st Bomb Group. We flew to Florida. Uh, we didn't know where we were going. We knew where we'd land the first time. It would be uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. There we got orders to go to Puerto Rico, but we were told not to open them up until we got an hour out over the ocean. And that way we would find out where we were going, South Pacific or England. And so we, a few planes took off each day from Harrington, Kansas. And it took us, well, our orders showed when we started and flew to Puerto Rico that we were going to England. So from Puerto Rico we flew to South America and uh, flew from there to Dakar, Africa and then Marrakech and then into England. It took about three weeks for the whole group, all the planes, 491st Bomb Group, to get over there from the time the first one left Harrington, Kansas. Mercy. And we all got into Medfield, England. What, did your crew, did you, had you talked about which which theater you wanted to go to? I mean, whether you wanted to be European Theater or Pacific, or did it matter? Well, I guess at that time we didn't realize, I, I think we would have preferred the English the, over there in the European Theater rather than South Pacific. Did you have any, was there any bad weather or anything that you had to fly through? And do, I mean, that was, a, that was a long way to get there. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that was, that's about as far as the B-24 could fly, flying from South America to uh, to uh, Africa. That was the shortest route right. there, across there, and that's about four, it was a full tank of gas, that's about as far as the B-24 could go without. Now, did you name your plane? Starduster. Okay. Yeah. You were, was that mean? I mean, was that did that have a meaning to anybody or just somebody? Yeah. Somebody I, just said yeah. it and it's yeah. it stuck. Mm -hmm. it just stuck. Well, it, you know, when we got into England and started flying missions, then different ones we flew different planes. I mean, because you know. Couldn't fly your own. We didn't fly every day. We flew a fly mission, and then maybe tomorrow somebody else would fly that plane. Another crew would fly okay. it, and it got shot down for too long. Some other crew was flying it, and it got shot down. So that was the end of the Star Trekter. Oh, okay. So when so when you got to England, and where where did you fly out of or fly into England? Where was the Remember where they Medfield. Were? Medfield. Okay. Medfield, and it was pretty close to the English Channel. And uh, in fact, uh, we started flying not long before D-Day. And on D-Day, we flew two missions. It's the only time we ever flew two missions in one day. We flew to the coast of Normandy twice and bombed the area there. And on D-Day. Was it, do you know what specific, I mean, was it Omaha Beach or Utah Beach or was it a certain beach that you were bombing or Norm was it? Normandy. Just the whole, yeah. just somewhere along yeah, the Normandy yeah, Beach? Yeah. Because you were, you'd been waiting for, I mean, everybody had been waiting for the weather to clear enough for you guys to be able to fly and to get the paratroopers in um, for D-Day anyway. Was that a pretty anxious time? I mean, did you, 
I mean, you realized that this this big invasion was coming, right? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Was was there a lot of anxiety? Well, or yeah. You... Uh, it, it was quite a day because once we got up in the air and and started across that English Channel, all you could see the there's just boats in that had it filled up there going to that one point there, Normandy, right from from England. Uh, and it was quite a sight to see that. And we bombed marshaling yards there at Paris. And, and just, uh, uh, we, we had, had an engine shot out on one mission. Well, we had an engine shot out over Karlsruhe, Germany, okay. one day, and had to leave the formation. All our flights were in formation. And uh, which is, you know, you uh, you know what a formation yes, is in different planes flying. And uh, uh, we got an engine shot out, had to leave the formation because you couldn't uh, stay in formation with three engines. It just wouldn't work. Right. And we had to drop out and head back towards them. And one of the fighter escorts. Uh, stayed with us until we got to the English Channel and uh, we made it back all right well, that's good. three engines now, on on D-Day when when you were you probably you were probably flying at night would, did you leave at night for that run in the Normandy no, no, that was during the daytime was it during the daytime during the daytime, daytime, daytime. Uh -huh. okay. how what was the what was the opposition the Germans were putting up were they were they putting up a lot of fight against you guys? I mean, were you having a lot of flack that you were having to dodge, or? Well, no, I don't remember that we had a, a, a lot of flack on, on that. Because uh, it was, you know, uh, quite a ways from Germany. There, okay. Just to, uh, just, uh, we're just flying to the coast. Right. Of, uh, Normandy there and then drop our bombs and come back. About how many bombs, how many bombs could you drop it? I mean, carry or, you remember? Uh, no, I don't, don't, don't remember how many. No, I don't remember much about that. You, you might have, like, how long did it, how long were you, like, there bombing? 10 minutes, do you think, or 15 before you turn around and come back, or was it longer than that? Well, uh, Formation. Uh, I guess we all dropped them about the same time, and then as soon as we dropped them, and we would turn around, head back. Yeah. Okay. Did you like flying once you've done it? Yeah, I liked the flying part of it, but I didn't like the war. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he tried to get in commercial flying when he got out, but. It too many had more hours than what he had. Right. So after so after D Day and, and um, the European invasion, we started. Then, did you change your base from England, or did you stay at your base at England and, and run bombing runs from there, or? Well, I tell you, uh, we were went we were at Medfield. That's pretty close to the coast there, to begin with, and the four ninety second bomb group. Uh, the the German fighters concentrated on them so much that they shot so many of them down that they disbanded and we moved up to their location. Uh, uh, I see North Pickingham, I think it was, okay. and we it was a better base, and we moved up there and started flying our missions from up there then. And uh, uh, so we were on two different bases there in England. And when we got 31 missions, why well, they, they, they was having crews come over to replace ones that, you know, got shot down maybe. And, right. And, from the United States, the crew 
got formed and they'd fly over to England and come in. So they had a crew there that, to relieve us after we got our thir 31st mission in. and They let us come back to the United States. Yeah. So, so your other missions, you flew over there. Um, can you tell me any specific other targets you had besides Normandy or any campaigns? Did you have, were you involved with the bulge, any the Battle of the Bulge, trying to bomb? Oh yeah, yeah. To we, get those guys out yeah, of there. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, had missions there and uh, different parts of Germany, and I don't know. I don't really remember much where each mission went or anything like that. Right. But uh, we were just. Uh, but you you were involved. Your crew was involved from D Day, the march all the way inward, then to Germany. It sounds mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. And those guys were happy to see you at the bulge, I'm sure, when the weather cleared, you could come through there oh, and yeah. get them out of that mess. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you realize at that time what kind of mess those guys were in while you were waiting for the weather to clear? I mean, had word gotten back to England, to your base, that you know we were stalled and the Germans had you know, pretty much encircled some of those guys, and, but you couldn't fly because the weather wasn't clear enough? Had word gotten back to that, or no? I just don't remember much about that. Yeah, I just don't. That's been so long ago that I, <laughs> I just don't have much memory. Of quite that. a few years. Yeah. Do you, um, you remember anything about the base? Were the uh, were the English glad to have you around there, or the British, or? Did they seem friendly towards you? Oh, yeah, 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 they, they were really friendly, yeah, they was glad to have us over there, because if we hadn't went over there, they the Germans would have took England over. Right. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they would have, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were, they were. Do you yeah. ever remember if there was ever one mission that you were flying that you thought, uh-oh, we're in trouble, besides? Or is it just the one where you lost the one engine? Was that probably the worst one that you had? Yeah, that was the worst one that we had, yeah. Of course, we got one crew shot down on the very first mission they went on over Paris, France. Yeah. And, uh, but they, luckily, they got with the French underground. I mean, you know, Germans had that area. Right. But you get out in the pastures and other places uh, why they, the Frenchmen were out there and they got with some of the Frenchmen and they took them back to the, I uh, forget the name of those mountains that they had to cross over. I know which ones you're talking about, I can't. And they, so they, they stayed with the French underground until they got back over to the uh, English Channel and got back to uh, England uh, which is pretty good since I've never flown a plane let alone flown a plane when somebody's trying to shoot me out of the sky mm -hmm. can you tell anybody what that is like in, with flak coming up around you is there any way you can describe that if, if somebody was writing a report a child to, to say you know what that's like? Oh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, no, I can't. It's, it's, it's just, you just have to feel like it's just something that you have to do regardless of whether that flak hits you or not. I mean, uh, we had a lot of it. Yeah, I, I know they weren't, they weren't 
they weren't easy missions. Mm -hmm. Nobody was letting, it wasn't an easy path in there. So, so you flew your 31 missions, and they let you come back to the United States yeah. then. Mm -hmm. So when the war ended, the European War, um, did you think that you'd have to go to the Pacific, or, were you, or did you know you were pretty much done then? That you were well, when I came back to the United States, I went down and uh, I decided I wanted to continue flying, and uh, I went to, down to somewhere in Georgia, I think it was, and went and got my license to instruct cadets. Mm -hmm. So I started instructing cadets to fly. And uh, I did that for a while. And, and, uh, and then the and war ended over there in Europe. And uh, they quit training cadets because they didn't need any more right. pilots. And so, uh, well, that's about the end of my service time. I, when I was 47, then I got out of service. Okay. So you got out of the service, and, and then his, his wife said that um, you tried to be a commercial pilot, but there was probably a hundred well, thousand of you. I did, <laughs> I did uh, uh, went out somewhere, I, I don't know, I remember now what state it was to check on it, uh, but uh, they had so many applications and everything, why uh, uh, I, I wasn't uh, included. And uh, I went to school then to learn electronics. From, uh, I had free schooling from the war. So I went to, I lived in Dayton, Ohio at that time. And uh, I went, uh, started working at the Air Force. Oh, what did they call that? The Air Force Base here in Newark, or? Well, the one down there in oh, Dayton. Oh, okay. And then and they eventually moved up to Newark. Oh, okay. That's what happened. And that's how it come. we came up here in 63, we came to New York. And uh, this house was, they were just building these homes in here then, at that time. This was all, this, this land in here was just all pasture. And they started building all these homes right there when they moved that Air Force Station up to okay. New York. And we picked this lot here and picked the house, they had some houses already built for to show people see right. which, which house they wanted and we picked the house we wanted and they built it on the air and ever since 63 and we've been here ever since then now I don't know when was so was probably Johnny Clem's school built after 63 after you moved here no it was here was it already down there okay so it was it was here. They just built up around it. Mm -hmm. So then you ended up retiring from the New York Air Force Base. Yeah, ended up retiring from it. Okay, nineteen eighty. When another question about D Day. When you were training for that, was there a lot of? Did you have to do a lot of training for that invasion? Did they go over what you were supposed to do a lot, so that you knew what your job in that was? Uh, you mean on D-Day? Yes. Not really. No, you said it was just like a regular mission. We just went to the coast of England and dropped their bombs. Okay. We went on the coast of France there and dropped yeah. their bombs to show the ones, the boats and everything, all the uh, military that was going on with the boats could land. And, Start fighting the Germans. Right. Oh, I had something. I hate that. 
It's on the tip of my tongue, and then it, it went and fell right down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you may did you stay in touch with any members of the crew, like right after the war and that? Or was it everybody just too busy raising families, probably? I guess they just know. Yeah, well, now, we've had, uh, we had... Reunions. Reunions okay. for quite a number of years, in fact. Uh, and, uh, of course, we just went to the ones that were not too far away here. We didn't go clear out west. But they had two down at Dayton, at the Air Force Museum down there. And uh, we went to both of those. And uh, where else did we go? Uh, was it Georgia? Is that where the... That was where the last one was, wasn't it? Yeah, down there in Georgia, the last one. And uh, there was uh, uh, about four of our crew members came to the ones that we went to. So was, uh, a couple of them were from Pennsylvania, one from New York, and... and uh, the other pilot was from Pennsylvania, so they were at these reunions that we had. Right. And uh, I, I forget what year that they had their last reunion down there in Georgia, but that was quite a, uh, a thing there. We spent about four days down there, and we really enjoyed that. It was a, the final reunion of the. Right. 491st bomb group. And, uh, you was uh, the only one there at the last one, wasn't you, from your group? You thought they just stayed close, but I guess, like you say, families and everything. Life, just, life happens, I yeah. think. I mean, it's one of those things where you, you plan on it maybe and just things you know, take a turn. Have you taken an honor flight? To Washington? Yeah, I have. Uh huh. What did you think of that? Oh, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. A friend of mine that's in the hospital right now. Uh, he's in pretty bad shape. And then I went on that flight to, on a flight to Washington, D.C. And uh, we, we, we enjoyed that. Good. Is there, is there any story or anything that you know, sometimes guys have funny stories that they tell, of things that maybe different fellows did to each other, or just to pass the time and help you cope with the war. <laughs> you got any, you remember anything that anybody ever? No, I don't. Uh... They must have been pretty serious. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I already can't think of anything. I don't think back then. Uh, okay. Is there anything before we turn the tape off that you? want a young person to remember from your service and the service of others during World War II, what would, what would you want them to, to what, take away and to remember of your, of your people, of your generation? It's a kind of a question that I don't really know how to answer. Okay. All right, well, thank you for that interview.